Hi, I'm Sari Sudekran. In this video, I wanted to explain how film is an art form, maybe even an amalgamation of many art forms combined together. It's probably even the greatest art form ever made. You might not agree with me, but in this video, I wanted to explain my thoughts on how film basically takes from many different art forms, combines them, and still produces something unique and different and stands on its own as a completely separate art form by itself. First, what is art? There's no universal definition of art. If you Google it, you'll find many definitions. I have my own personal one, and it is a self-contained tangible expression by a human by design. So the art must be a physical thing. For example, a song, sculpture, video, etc. It must be self-contained, which means there must be a boundary. So it stands alone and can be identified as a separate entity. It must be an expression by a human being. Well, that's obvious enough. Uh, wind shaping a rock surface is not art. It's just landscape. Humans create art. Now, we don't want to get into the territory of whether animals can create art or not. That's not the purpose of this video. The next thing is it must be by design. So if I cut myself in blood spurts on the wall, it's not art. If I do it on purpose, it could be labeled art. Remember, it's an expression, not an accident. It must be voluntary. So Jackson Pollock spreading paint on canvas is art because it's voluntary. If somebody just tips over a can of paint and it creates some kind of imagery, you don't call it art. So it must be voluntary so it's by design. And this forms the basis of what I understand art to be, and I believe film is one such medium of art. What are the various art forms? The art forms prevalent in human history can be divided into these broad categories. One, visual arts, which could include painting, sculpture, etc. There's decorative arts, fashion, products, etc. Performing arts, music, film, video, theater, etc. And literature, stories, poems, essays, etc. Humans have found very creative ways to express something with whatever they have in hand. See, ultimately, art is nothing but an effort to communicate when other forms of communication prove inadequate. After a while, processes become a tradition, and we are then spoiled for choice among the various art forms available as a mode of expression. So you form rules, and then you can pass on those rules so others can start learning the same art form and use that as a kind of language. Every art form can have its own rules, and these rules are made so you can pass it on to other people who can then study, maybe take it to greater heights, do something else with it, express it in their own way, or maybe evolve into some other art form. So everything is a kind of evolution, as it were. Now, when we talk about the greatest art form, we're talking about an art form that has the greatest potential of self-expression. Now, this might not be something that you agree with and just treat it as a fun experiment. For example, is music able to express everything one wants to express? Or sometimes do you need to draw a painting? Sometimes do you need a sculpture? So you see where I'm going with that. You can express lots of things with art, but which art form gives you the greatest flexibility and encompasses the greatest range of emotions in one piece of art? And I believe that's film. And I'll explain to you uh, because I made a kind of infographic, a large infographic that I want to share with you right now. In this, I'll try to trace every major art form I can think of. Now, I won't cover specific art forms. There might be a lot of art forms that I'm going to miss out because it's going to be large. You can take anything and make it art practically. I've just taken the most major ones that I can think of. It's not a definitive guide. Please don't think it's scientific or whatever. Uh, you do your own research if you want accuracy. It's something that I created for myself and I'm sharing with you because I wanted to understand it myself. Just an example, if I've used the word painting to denote uh, cave paintings, oil paintings, even makeup, etc., any form of painting would come under painting. So just be aware of that. Just because your favorite art form isn't in the list doesn't mean anything. It's not a definitive list. We have six primary branches from where we're going to start. As human beings, when we talk about self-expression, we're talking about 
some place where we can start. We have to start from the cause of what human beings can do. It has to be natural, man-made or unexplained, but it has to be produced by humans. So what can humans do? The first, we start from the left, is symbolic language or symbols, because human beings found a way to use symbols to communicate. And I have put that in brown, just to show that that's the genesis of where art can come from. And let's see how that progresses. You have written language, which is the language that we speak. We use alphabet and we use uh, our mouths to communicate. We create sentences, words, and we try to express ourselves. So that's a written language. It can be written down. We also have pictorial language, which, for example, the hieroglyphics uh, is pictorial language. You can use emojis as a modern art form. Whatever it is, we have the ability, human beings all over the earth have found a way to use language to communicate. So it can be in the form of alphabets or it can be in the form of pictorials. So that would be the first broad classification. So from written language or from the alphabet, you have poetry, for example, and you have prose. From pictorial language, you can have doodles, you draw something, you can you know, make comics or whatever it is. You can also have finger painting which is a mode of painting where you uh, apply pigment to your own hands and you paint something. And this is the most basic thing you can think about, right? If you don't have access to modern tools like pencils, paint, or whatever, what would human beings do? What they did a thousand years ago, 10,000 years ago, this is all they had access to. This is how they probably made cave paintings and wrote down stuff on clay tablets this would be the genesis, and it all starts from the ability of human beings to create language and to express themselves in la with language. Now, when you go one level higher to what that is capable of, for example, if you say prose and you combine sketches and doodles, you can actually create calligraphy, and calligraphy is the art of writing beautifully. Maybe you can write nonsense, it just has to look beautiful. On the other hand, you look at sketches and maybe finger painting, using your hands to basically sketch, and you can say that's tattoos. Tattoo art could be attributed or is from the branch that starts from symbolic language, from pictorial language. You have graffiti. All this starts from one place, which is our ability to express ourselves using language and pictorial forms or alphabets as symbols as starting places. And paintings basically come from that as well, from the ability to paint, to look at things in real life, to recreate them, to be able to use language which our eyes see. So it's directly, it's, it doesn't have to use alphabets, but it can be pictorial. In this case, the picture is what you see with your eyes and you're trying to recreate it, or you're trying to recreate something that you've seen in your mind. The second tree you can say is design. And design is the ability of human beings to make things with whatever they have. Raw materials, you get two twigs uh, from the ground and you can make something with it, right? So human beings can make clothes, which they did right from the beginning. They made appliances. Appliances can be accessories. Design leads to something like sculpture. You have clay, you mold clay, and you make a form, and that's sculpture. Clothes leads to fashion, which is an art form. Sculpture can lead to landscapes. And when I mean landscape, I mean landscaping of gardens and the world, terraforming, basically, right? And that leads to architecture, the ability to make appliances, to make bricks and things, uh, make machines that put bricks and things into place. The ability to sculpt, the ability to landscape, leads to architecture, which is an art form, very complex art form but it combines multiple art forms that human beings have started and starts with our ability to design something. If you look at something like graffiti, for example, architecture and graffiti are linked somehow. Graffiti comes from another branch, which is our ability to paint, but we need architecture. We need something to paint on that we have created, and that's graffiti. It's very interesting how complex the relationships are. I've tried my best to get them linked together, but it's not always going to be accurate. 
Then let's come to the uh, other branch of communication, which is verbal communication, which is how we talk, right? Uh, symbolic language was had to be written down somewhere. You had to draw it or write it down. Verbal communication is when you talk. So you can have chants, like Gregorian chants. That's an art form. Uh, a lot of religious chanting is basically art, which has been passed down through thousands of years. And then you have speech. Speech can lead to oratory. That's an art form. And then you have music, which is another huge and separate branch of art. Music is something innate. That's in all human beings, in all races, all cultures, practice some kind of music. That leads to songs. And you can see songs have a very complex relationship with poetry, which is written down. You have to write down words. Uh, it has a relationship with speech. You have to put down words. Maybe you don't write them down, but you memorize them. You have it in your head. But to create songs, you need words. And you also have instrumental music that comes from music. You can use anything at your disposal to create music. It can be whatever, maybe the table that I have right in front of me. Maybe it's a very complex instrument like a grand piano. Uh, before I go ahead, just wanted to bring in another art form, a complex art form that combines all of this, that combines painting, that combines fiction and literature, combines music and verbal communication together, and that's theater. Without these art forms, you don't have theater. You need space. Basically, that's architecture. You need words that actors can speak. That's verbal communication if you write them down, and that's symbolic communication. You have paintings, you have backdrops, you have fashion because they wear something, and you have music sometimes in theater. You don't have to, sometimes you do. So theater is a very complex art form that draws upon many multiple sources. Then let's look at two other branches. The first is nonverbal communication, in which we don't express using our mouth. Uh, we can use our face, for example, facial expressions or body language. And that can lead to something like mimicry. A uh, mime, for example, just use your body to express yourself. And a complex form of that is dance. Dance is an advanced form of using body language to express yourself. And then, of course, you have acting. The difference between acting and mimicry probably is acting is you're trying to be somebody else. You're trying to bring out your emotions. And you're trying to express yourself. And it might include the use of words. So verbal communication and mimicry comes together to form acting, which again is important for theater. So you have nonverbal communication as well for theater. So you can see how theater is a very complex art form that draws on so many things. The final branch is photography, where we have a device that can record what's in front of us. So you have simple photography, which is 2D, maybe stereoscopy, 3D photography, maybe you have 3D holograms, whatever it is. You create still images with photography, and that's an art form all by itself. When you're able to create multiple images, or oh, maybe 24 frames a second, as you might have heard, that's moving images, and you have film. You have something that moves. You can combine paintings with digital art. You can paint using computers, for example, and combine that with moving images, and that becomes animation, a completely separate art form. But what if you combine theater and moving images, recording that performance with moving images, and you finally have film? A film on a scale of complexity is more complex than theater, more complex than music and anything, because it combines everything together. And with nonverbal communication, you also have games, right? Uh, we have sports from which you have video games, which comes from uh, computers or whatever. The ability to create virtual worlds and play games with that. And the future might as well be virtual reality because if you combine games with films, then you can create a world in which human beings can express themselves, live their life. This is short of life itself, but it will be the next step up from filmmaking. And you will be able to just live your life in the world that you desire, the way that you desire, in the avatar that you desire. And this has not so far come to pass. The closest we have is just games, and we have a little bit of virtual reality right now. But it's probably a given, as long as we don't annihilate ourselves, 
we are bound to create a virtual world sooner or later. And that might displace film as the greatest art form that humans have ever invented. But so far, at the time of this recording, it's still cinema that's the most complex, has the ability to combine multiple art forms, uh, combine them in such a way that you have and you can express yourself over a period of time and use all the art forms together in any way you choose, which is why I call film the greatest art form. And art forms by design over many hundreds of years become democratic. What I mean by that is when writing first came to human beings, it was at the hands or with the hands of the elite. Only a few people had access to uh, knowledge of how to write, maybe the tablets, the technology, the others didn't care. But it spread like wildfire. Today, anybody in any corner of the world can write with a pencil and piece of paper. It's not so hard or it's not expensive anymore. Look at how mobile phones have made filmmaking and photography cheap. It used to be expensive 20, 25 years ago. No, not the case anymore. So filmmaking has become very democratic. You can edit on your mobile phone. That's why everybody's making reels and stories and whatnot. You can create as much content as you want with video and film, and you can combine all the art forms. Film has basically become democratic as of this millennium. And the next thing is definitely virtual reality. It's going to take, so take a while for it to come down in price, to be accessible to everybody, for the technology to mature and to spread to everybody. But it's going to happen sooner or later. So this is my take. I want to share this video with you on why I feel film is an art form, combines many art forms, is also the greatest art form that we have right now, and probably will be replaced by virtual reality sometime in the near future. That's all for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. I'll see you in the next one. Bye now.